I want to actually thank another awesome uh, Wellness Way doc, uh, Dr. Steve Nagel. He actually gave me this uh, idea and hopefully guys, this will help you kind of understand how the immune system works because so many times we talk about uh, antibodies, 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 and guys, by the time that you need antibodies, you are so far down in immune system response. So people think it's antibodies that confer immunity, but it actually isn't. And the people who are always doing the best handling any infection, including the one that we're going through right now, is actually has nothing to do with antibodies. And I'm gonna show you some of the most important things. And if you guys actually look into the people who have the hardest times being able to overcome any kind of infection for that matter, you're gonna see a breakdown in certain parts of the immune system, guys. And this is just basic uh, immunology 101. And so he, uh, Dr. Steve gave me the idea of explaining the immune system kind of like a castle and a castle defense, okay? So what I want you guys to think of, and, and I have this picture up here, and hopefully guys, this makes a lot of sense to you and helps you to understand really how the body defends itself from any virus, how it defends itself from any kind of uh, virus, how it defends itself from any kind of toxin for that matter. Because just remember, one of the biggest things of why people die has to do with the immune system, right? The immune system is really what is fighting the battle. It's what's keeping you alive. And just remember this is that, you know, if, if you think about if you run over a possum and you leave that possum there, the, pa the possum dies, you come back 10 days later and you're going to notice that the possum is breaking down. So you see that their skin is breaking down. You might see that their insides have, have um, you know, become very gassy or maybe even exploded at that point. And Guys, the reason why is, is not because once it dies, something attacks them. It's because the bacteria that live on the skin, the bacteria that live within the gut and within the colon, um, as soon as the immune system shuts down, then um, those bacteria are continuing to go to work and there's nothing to counteract them. And so this is really why, guys, is um, when you have some kind of infection like strep throat or you have an earache or you have... Um, you know, some kind of, uh, uh, you know, infection within the gastrointestinal system. Guys, all it is, is a, an overgrowth of bacteria that were already there. So, you know, this is why the bacteria is actually there to help us, but it's also there to break us down when we die. And so the immune system is what has this defense. It has this defense, which is always fighting this battle all the time to, um, to keep you alive. So guys, when you look at what actually, you know, kills most people is it really is something that involves with the immune system. So really, I want you guys to think about it. Uh, I want you to think about heart disease. Heart disease is an immune response. So heart disease is an inflammatory response that's going to cause placking of the artery. If that, you know, placking tends to break off, then it will actually cause a clot. So heart disease is really an immune system response. Guys, cancer is an immune system response, or I should say it's a failure of a proper immune system response because we have cells within our body that are specifically designed to kill off virally infected cells and also cancer cells. That's why ultimately I was talking to um, a patient earlier on today uh, doing a remote consult. I said, ultimately, you know, uh, one of the one of the biggest reasons why you had cancer was because it was an ultimate failure of the immune system in order to be able to target and kill off those uh, cancer cells. So when you look at the top two leading cause of death in the United States, heart disease is immune, cancer is a failure of the immune system, and then when you look at even things like type two diabetes, really what most people are actually dying from from type two diabetes because no one dies from type two diabetes, they're dying from the effects of it which is either something involving the cardiovascular system or it actually can be due to having some kind of massive infection um, because blood sugar and the immune system are gonna go hand in hand. Um, so really when you look at even people at the end of their lives, really one of the reasons why they die is because the immune system, it's a failure of the immune system and a lot of times people will die of pneumonia or something like that. And guys, even pneumonia, what it is, is just an overgrowth of the normal bacteria that are living within the lining of the lungs and it's just the immune system can't keep up with it. So I wanna give you an illustration of really how your body was set up. 
uh, as far as the immune system and how it fights the battle every single day, because people are talking about antibodies and actually you're seeing that we try to stimulate antibodies uh, with you know different kinds of jabs and whatnot. But really that's the far end of the immune system. And really the battle is won, not with antibodies. The battle is won at the barrier, okay? So let me, let me talk to you about this and how your immune system is a lot like uh, a castle, okay? So if you look at this castle here, you're gonna notice that there are barriers and that there's a defense that is set up even before it gets overrun with um, the enemy, okay? Because by the time that a castle gets overrun with the enemy and the enemy is already on the inside, then a lot of times it can be too late. So it's the same thing with the body. The body wants to fight the battle, not inside the body. It wants to fight it outside of the body. So it wants to fight it um, in the external environment. And so that means it's why we have specific layers of protection. So let me, sh let me show you this. If you look at a castle, there's a moat. Why is there a moat? Because it's harder for the enemy to have to cross the moat to get to the actual, the fortress, to the outside wall, if it has to cross the moat. So how is the moat, what is that similar to when it comes to our immune system? So here's the first thing. The first thing is, is if, even if you just took, for example, your mucous membranes in your sinuses, your mucous membranes in your mouth, your mucous membranes in your throat, uh, the mucous membranes within the uh, within the actual lining of the lungs, and the mucous membranes within the gastrointestinal system. And so you're already set up with this mucus layer, okay? Now, if you just took the gut, for example, here, if you look in, inside of the gut, you have this mucus layer, and this mucus layer is actually almost like the moat. And so the mucus layer is actually what is protecting the wall and that mucus layer inside of it has different things that are there to protect you. One of the first things is called secretory IgA. Secretory IgA, most uh, you know, it's basically the bouncers that are keeping, th you know, keeping uh, bacteria, keeping viruses, keeping toxins, uh, keeping it from entering in to the body's internal environment. So here you have the secretory IgA. It would almost be like, um, you know, if in that moat. Uh, there was a bunch of piranha in there. So really that secretory IgA, it actually inactivates, uh, opsonizes the, you know, the, the virus, for example, or bacteria, and it just makes it too large for it to be able to enter. If you also look at the, the microbiome or all the bacteria that lives within the mucus layer, also provides a layer of protection. So this is no different than a moat with a castle to the mucus layer that you have that coats uh, basically anything that goes from out, uh, the external environment into the internal environment, okay? So then you have the next thing is you have the actual wall. So if you look at the wall, then you have your next line of defense. So if something happens to cross the moat and get to the wall, then what happens is you have what's known as an epithelial layer. Uh, basically think of your skin. So here you have the skin, but you also have an epithelial layer within your sinus cavity, within your nose, within your esophagus, uh, within your lung lining, and also within the gastrointestinal system. So it's anything that goes from external environment into the internal environment. So that provides another layer of protection. Now, here's where it starts to get really awesome. And, and I want you to think of this. On that wall, on that castle wall, is they're going to put guards there. And they're going to put things that uh, um, certain guards that are going to um, always be surveying what is happening along that castle wall. Now, inside of the immune system that are lining those barriers are called macrophages and dendritic cells. Notice how we haven't talked anything about antibody production yet. So here you have uh, things like macrophages and you have dendritic cells. Those type of cells are really dependent on where they are located. And they're located within the gastrointestinal system. They're located within the liver. They're located underneath the surface of the skin. They're located within the lung lines, linings. So they're located any time that the internal and external environment comes into contact. And it's no different than as soon as you cross that wall, now you are onto the interior of that castle. So these are almost like the guards that are surveying that wall. And these are called in your immune system, macrophages, dendritic cells. And here's what they do. They have the ability to be able to kill off and to eat things like viruses, things like bacteria, things like toxins, 
Yes, this also includes uh, specific proteins that leak through or get through known as food allergies. And then what happens is, is not only do they have the ability to be able to eat those, those ones initially, but they have the ability to then go and present what they have actually eaten or what they have found to the next part of your immune system known as your adaptive immune system. And we call those your helper T cells. These are called your helper T cells. So the macrophages, the dendritic cells are really the guards and the guards actually say, hey, we killed someone. Now what we need to do is we need to go within the interior and we need to let them know that we are under attack. And who do they call? Who do they tell first? They call who is in charge of having this next response. And these are known as your helper T cells. But this would be no different than if the guards go and they tell the general, they tell the person in charge and they say, hey, we're under attack. What we need you to do right now is we need you to coordinate another line of defense because right now we're under attack. The general says, well, tell me what they look like. Tell me how many people that they are. Tell me you know, what kind of response that we need. And it's those macrophages that literally wear the hat on the surface of their cell. They go to the helper T cells and say, here's what's going on and here's what we need to do. And that helper T cells will then send a chemical response to start to coordinate another line of defense against a bacteria or against some kind of virus. So within that castle, you have the general that starts to call in the guard. They start to call in the sniper uh, specific cells. Those sniper specific um, you know, cells have the ability to um, just systematically start killing off anything that would be considered a specific foreign invader for that specific attack. So the helper C uh, T cell known as the CD4 cell is then coordinating a response. They will send you know, specific chemical inflammatory messages in order to be able to produce what are known as B lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes produce antibodies, but really what is more important than that is a specific T cell response known as killer T cells. So basically in this castle, the general says we're under attack. Uh, everyone, you know, on the interior of the castle, we need you to stand guard and we need you specifically to kill uh, specifically kill um, uh, who is attacking us. I don't want you to kill any of the, the peasants. I want you to kill specifically who is trying to breach this wall and who has gotten within the wall and is actually making us under attack. And so those killer T cells in the body are sniper specific. They are sensitized specifically to kill whatever virus was presented by the macrophage that was then called in with the helper T cell that then um, sends the message specifically to this specific virus or to this specific bacteria. And those killer T cells are what are responsible for killing virally infected cells. They're the ones that are responsible for killing cancer cells. And so really guys, when you think about it, in order for you to have to get to that level or that level of response, there has to be a poor mucus layer. You have to be low in secretory IgA. You have to have a poor microbiome. Your barriers have to be you know, very poor, weak, and not intact. And then on top of that is you, you have to have a very poor, what is known as a, a, an innate immune system response, things that are known as dendritic cells and macrophages. That last line of defense is the killer T cells and the helper T cells. And that last line of defense is your antibodies. And it's the antibodies that will help to protect you anytime that you get uh, reintroduced to that same exact bacteria or a virus. And all it does is it helps to inactivate it that much sooner, even before you start to have any kind of clinical symptoms. Guys, it's no different than a castle, okay? It's no different than a castle. Um, and so the beauty of it is maybe the people back in the, uh, in the uh, olden days, maybe they actually did understand how to properly have an immune system response. But how we do it today in medicine is we actually say it doesn't matter um, as far as what your barriers are. It doesn't matter if you have um, you know, a, a healthy wall that's up. None of that actually matters. But really just what we do is we need to just kind of stimulate just a bunch of crazy people to go after it uh, once it's already come into the body. Once it's already breached the whole entire castle, then we'll start to deal with it. And this is why 
it has been a utter failure with what we are doing because we are looking at things completely backwards, guys. If you want to have a healthy immune system response, you need to have the moat, you need to have the wall up, and you need to have enough guards that, that know what to do and to be able to present it to the generals and then be able to present it to the snipers so that you can you can undergo a very specific response and one that can happen very quickly, okay? So guys, is your immune system like a castle? Yes, I agree. And yes, this is kind of in a simplistic uh, type of approach to this, but the main idea, guys, is that you get the big idea about how the immune system works. This is how the body was created. This is how the body works. And it's not even my opinion, guys, it comes from Guyton's medical textbook of physiology. So we're doing it backwards, but not in our wellness way approach. When we start to help a person with their immune system, we are first looking at the lines of defense first, the innate immune system, and then focus on the adaptive immune system last, okay? So guys, if you like this video, please make sure that you share it. Uh, share it with other people. Help them get a basic understanding of the immune system because, oh my goodness, I would probably imagine that if you uh, ask people now, probably 50% of people, if you ask them, do we have any kind of defense against COV, et cetera, et cetera, people would say we have no defense. And in fact, if I get exposed to that virus, I have literally a 100% chance of dying. You were given an immune system. You were given the defenses and it's up to you to be able to care for that gift. And how you care for that gift is how you care for your body. It is your lifestyle. And that's what we're missing today is no one is talking about lifestyle, about responsibility. And if maybe if you don't know about lifestyle, then find a wellness way doctor who does because we are the experts in lifestyle. We are the experts in the immune system. We are the experts in how to restore the body back to normal because a normal body already is a miracle. So guys, again, thank you for joining me. Make sure that you share this video. And again, I appreciate guys, all your thoughts, prayers. Um, you know, as we, uh, my family goes through um, all of this and uh, I always guys appreciate um, uh, spending some time with you guys. So I hope you guys have a great Thursday. I hope you guys have a great weekend as well. And uh, we will catch you guys very, very soon. And oh, by the way, the uh, Make Immune Systems Strong Again coming up a week from Saturday, uh, uh, September 25th. The link to register for that in-person event is right on the top of our page. It is free to register right now unless we get a new venue. We only have four spots left. So make sure if you are in the Yorkville area, make sure you get registered for it right away. All right. And we will talk a lot more about this and about this idea. All right. So guys, be well. I appreciate all of you. We'll talk to you guys soon.